ever wondered how we actually go about sharing the good news of Jesus Christ? How do we actually approach people? How do we make it interesting enough or defendable enough to answer their questions? Acts is a whole series of stories about how the gospel went out of Judea into Samaria until the ends of the world. And in that, there is lots of explanation and example of how that happens. We have Paul, the great orator, who does these speeches later on in Acts 17. He's clever and uses the wit and the wisdom and the words of structure of that day to get past his message. But in Acts 13, we have this really interesting tale of Barnabas and Saul, or Paul, because he kind of just used his Hebrew name or his Roman name, depending on the area that he was in in a place called Pisidia. And there, it happens over a couple of weeks. In the first week, they are invited to the synagogue to sit in the Jewish area of, of this town and invited to speak. And the way that they speak to this crowd is they look back and say, hey, Jewish people, in your past, you had this. You had this story. Here is the story of your exodus. Here is the story of your kings. Here is the story of your law. This is what you know, but here is the gap. Here is the more I can tell you. And so this is a really good entry point for us. It's a really good thing to be able to do, to actually know the people and to recognize what they know, what history they have, what points of knowledge they already have that we can agree on and add into. So we're not coming in cold. Not only are we not coming in cold, but we're not coming in unknowing to them, Bible bashing them, so to speak. Did you know about Jesus? It's more of an invitation to a conversation rather than a straight, hey, you need, you didn't know this, now you will. Because actually that comes across a little bit mean, a little bit trite, and a little bit heavy handed. So in knowing people well enough to know their story and to know their history and to know the places that you can add in and fill in the gaps that they might have not realized. Paul did this. This is how Jesus appeared in the law. This is how Jesus was a better king than David. And then the second really cool thing is he just lets it run. It says in verse 44 that it was a whole week later, a whole Sabbath cycle later that the and the crowd has turned up. They have just turned up because whatever he said on that first week has now percolated. Um, and the whole town, it says, is there. And they are Jews and they are Romans and Greeks and they're freemen and, and they're all there. They're all like, what is going on? Because the work of God is always about itself, even without us, often without us we can do our very best and we can speak into things and we can be prayerful and obedient and options and ability but actually we have to trust God we have to trust him that he is doing work without us <laughs> that he can do it by himself and so there was no hustle during the week that is recorded here there was no um, stringing up the sitting there with a the table let me convince you about Jesus there was no door knocking that we know of but just simply the word of God being preached in that first instance and then left in God's faithful hands to be made known. And sometimes we forget that that is happens. That actually we just do our part and we can leave it to the faithfulness of God and to the nudgings and the urgings of his spirit to bring in and draw people in. And it says later on that the while some of the Jews followed, some rejected, but on hearing this good news a week later, many of the Gentiles heard and came to Jesus. And so, as with the suffering thing, we don't know what we're going to get. We don't know if this is going to go really bad for us. We don't know if there's going to be any fruit when we share. Nothing could happen. Something might happen. It might be a week or a month or whoever knows later. But there are some really great ways that we can share the gospel of Christ with others. It might be simply finding people and pointing them towards God in the same story. It might be simply doing our part and trusting God to do it. It might be sharing a new story in a new place and letting God do the rest to bring people to rejoicing and celebration. As you look 
and read through the book of Acts up to this point and further on, you may have noticed all the different and clever ways this happens. Uh, later on in 14, there's a whole story of healing. And actually, this is another way that we can be showing uh, God's grace and God's love and God's compassion in prayer, in thoughtful laying of hands for people, in the ministry and hope of healing, but also in the ministry and hope of presentness and suffering. This too is a great way that we can be sharing God's word with people. So don't be afraid, church. As you read the book of Acts and go, oh man, I'm not Paul, or I'm not Barnabas, or I'm not Peter, how, how do I do this one <laughs> Talk of what you know of God. On Sunday, we will be bringing and coming together with rocks and testimony to show how God is faithful. These are also is another way that you can spread the stories of God's faithfulness with your own. So we've got one, knowing people well and sharing God into the spaces of their life. Two, letting the Holy Spirit do his thing. Trusting that God will be at work moving and growing and drawing people in their own way. Three, telling everybody, everybody that you can, not maybe just the people that you expect, but maybe even those you don't, about the goodness of God, knowing that we don't know how they will respond. Three, four, goodness me, my mask got bad over lockdown. Being in places of hardship and suffering, and praying for healing and sitting in places, places of hardness. And five, sharing your own testimony. Now, they're not too hard. Don't be too scared. Be brave. God's Spirit is with you.